This poem is called Ghosts. Even though I've never seen one, I still believe. It makes sense that spirits would inhabit a land that's only new to us and that they wouldn't make themselves available to those who choose not to see. We have a ghost on the stairs that lead up to our apartment. My wife, when she wiggles her key, can see it, motionless on the landing. Now she tells me only because she knows I won't ask her to prove it. She, to me, seems almost ghost-like in that she reveals her true self only to the uncynical eye. Now, I have had a phone that no one touched start to play music. I woke up last night and knew that if I opened my eyes, it was fucking over. <laughs> I picture ghosts like a horror movie, and of course, I'm the star, and the ghosts ornaments to my quest for understanding the spirit world. Who would reveal themselves to that kind of narcissism? <laughs> my wife is the kind of person who can listen to the least funny person at a party for 90 minutes. And to my surprise, that person is not boring, just quiet. And like any living thing needs a light to move towards. I think of younger versions of myself now as ghosts, disinterested in growth and easily at something small as the wrong tone in an email, they inhabit me. Ghosts, after all, are here because of unfinished work. Some choked back words stuck like a bone in the air of their throats. What they need is a small seat at the table to describe the pain they've seen. And I promise you, they're going to get it. Whether I believe in them or not, just like history, I either give them a seat or they become the table. <laughs>